welcome children to this virtual class wishing you all a happy feast of the assumption of our lady and happy independence day children in the last lesson we saw david the courageous and successful monarch but he was human too and made mistakes he repented for his sins and cried for god's mercy he faced many challenging situations during his reign david firmly believed himself to be the servant of god and faithfully observed the social and religious traditions of the israelites david established his dynasty as promised by god and grew old thanking him for a united and strong israeli nation children this is our national emblem the ashoka pillar capital a couple of sessions back we spoke about the 26th january 1950 when we gave ourselves a constitution this sacred book of india was etched with this national emblem adopted on that same day you see it on all official documents and places do you know the meaning of this national emblem
children why do you think the founding fathers of the nation decided to choose ashoka as the person to give inspiration to the whole new born country i think maybe because he was the best king in the entire history of india in his kingdom there was unity he ruled over a vast empire as one kingdom peace his edicts were transcribed on such huge pillars in various parts of the empire and followed by the people prosperity he dedicated himself to the material and spiritual welfare of the people tolerance as a result of the violent wars in his earlier days he converted to buddhism and preached non-violence and tolerance questions for reflection write your thoughts in your notebook do you think the indians today have allowed themselves to be truly inspired by ashoka Was it worthwhile having chosen the Ashoka pillar capital as our national emblem? Let us now see how the people of Israel were impressed by one of their great king king solomon solomon consolidates the united jewish empire king david knowing that after his death there would be rival clements to his throne he decided to choose while he was still alive solomon his youngest son as his successor he arranged for the prophets jedo and nathan to anoint solomon as king of israel and juda yet when solomon actually ascended to the throne there happened to be a bloodbath as he was forced to squash those enemies in the court who disapproved of him the reign of solomon from 970 to 931 bc was a period of great peace and prosperity marked by a well organized government growth in foreign trade and neighboring nations paying tribute money to israel Solomon's vision at Gibeon One particularly important incident in the first years of Solomon's reign occurred at Gibeon where he had gone to offer sacrifices to the Lord There he had a vision of God speaking to him Let us see what happened through this video clipping That night God spoke to me in a dream. Solomon, ask for anything you want and I will give it to you. My father, David, your servant, 
was honest and did what you commanded. You've made me king in my father's place. But I'm very young and know so little about being a leader. Please make me wise and teach me the difference between right and wrong. If you don't, there is no way I could rule this great nation of yours. Solomon, I'm pleased that you asked for this. You asked for wisdom to make right decisions. So I'll make you wiser than anyone who has ever lived or ever will live. I'll also give you what you didn't ask for. You'll be rich and respected as long as you live, and you'll be greater than any other king. God was extremely pleased that Solomon had not asked for material benefits like long life, wealth, or power. God granted him wisdom and understanding more than anyone had before or would ever have again. And this was proved in a famous judgment scene in the king's court. Dispute over a dead infant Two women came to court with a dispute over a dead infant. It seems that these women both had given birth to new babies at about the same time. My Lord King, this woman, Leah and I, dwell within the same house. I was delivered of a child. On the third day after I was delivered, she was delivered also. There was no one in the house but we two. In the night, this woman's child died because she lay upon it. Wherefore, she removed my son from beside me while I slept and laid her dead child against my bosom. She lies. I do not lie. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my child, he was dead. Not so, Lord Solomon. The truth, Lord King. For when I looked at the child in my arms, I knew it was not the son that I did bear. It was her own child and none other. The living child is mine. The dead is yours. The dead is yours. The living mine. Bring the infant forward. Josiah. Place the child on the steps before me and show him to me. Draw your assault, Josiah. Divide the child into two parts. Give half to the one woman, half to the other. Solomon asked the soldier to divide the child into two and to give one half to one woman and the second half to the other. Do you think this solution made sense and why? Oh no! If it must be, give the child to her that it may not be slain. Divide it! It shall be neither hers nor mine! Take your son, mother, for he is surely yours. May the Lord God Jehovah praise and bless you. You would rather have surrendered him to another than to seem harmed. And take this woman hence and administer to her punishment to fit her perjury. She lies! She lies! It's not right! The child is mine! Mine! Now at last I have seen a judgment of Solomon, and your wisdom amazes me. Whatever wisdom he has been given me was for the benefit of my people. 
Continue to teach me, I beg of you, so that I may gain a greater insight into the wonder of your understanding. It will enable me to become a better and wiser ruler over my own people. Real wisdom lies in the ability to decide between the true and the false. Children, this is how it was made clear in the eyes of all who was the true mother. Solomon restores to her the living baby. The people of Israel just marveled that God had given Solomon such wisdom to settle disputes fairly and his fame spread far and wide. Administrative Reforms Solomon made the administration of his kingdom more efficient by dividing the whole territory into 12 districts fairly equal in population and crop production. Each district had officers in charge responsible for collecting food from farmers and shepherds to maintain Solomon's court needs for one month of every year. Solomon introduced the practice of forced labor away from home to maintain his many building projects the royal palace, the temple, fortification of cities and ports, granaries and storehouses for food and other material. This new practice was not liked by his people used to a life of fields and flocks. Still another change Solomon introduced in his foreign trade policy. No longer was trade left to individual merchants, but was managed by the king's officers. He constructed a fleet of ships with the help of Hiram, the king of Tyre and Phoenician shipbuilders and sailors. This fleet traded with Southern Arabia and East Africa and even brought back items from India, ivory, precious stones, and live monkeys. Solomon also traded in war chariots and developed horse breeding. The extensive commerce brought riches to many Israelites and a wealthy upper class was slowly emerging due to Solomon's administrative reforms. Now with so much wealth enjoyed by the upper classes in Solomon's court and civil services, people forgot the law codes of justice and concern. The poor and helpless lower classes, shepherds and farmers, were often treated with contempt and were forcibly recruited for labor. Corruption in the court led to violence and even shedding of innocent blood. For the first time, a noticeable gap appeared between the upper richer class and the common people in Israel. The prophets protested loudly against this lack of concern and injustice. Diplomatic Relations King Solomon built up friendly and diplomatic relations with other countries, even to an extent of marrying one of the daughters of the Pharaoh of Egypt, unusual for a king of Israel. The Bible tells a legendary story about the Queen of Sheba, who hearing of the wisdom and riches of Solomon, decided to visit him in his royal palace in Jerusalem. Originating in the Bible, the Queen of Sheba is a figure featured in the stories of many cultures and religious groups. Her story focuses on her travels to Jerusalem. She is said to have arrived in Jerusalem with a camel bearing spices to give to Solomon. 
she arrived with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices, and very much gold and precious stones, I Kings 10 2. Never again came such an abundance of spices, 10 10, 2 Kron. 919. She presented several riddles to Solomon, which he answered to her satisfaction. In the tale, Solomon taught Sheba about his god, Yahweh, and then they exchanged gifts. After that, the queen returned to her homeland. Solomon was the most powerful ruler in the area stretching from Euphrates to Egypt. His reign remembered in the history of Israel as the Golden Age enjoyed a special love and protection from God. During Solomon's reign, the unified kingdom of Israel with its capital in Jerusalem reached the height of its splendor and glory. Even then, there lurked an undercurrent of discontent and rivalry among the tribes. The powerful tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh in the north felt resentment towards Judah, the tribe of the royal family. These tribal rivalries added to heavy taxes and forced labor, eventually paved the way for a split or division in the people of Israel. So children, we saw how Solomon consolidates the united Jewish empire, his vision at Gibeon, and how he settled the dispute over a dead infant, his administrative reforms and his diplomatic relations. Children, keep everything aside. Solomon prayed for the gift of wisdom to rule his people with justice and to know the difference between good and evil, God granted him this precious gift. Let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us close our eyes. Let us become aware of our breathing. As we breathe in, say, bless me, Jesus. As you breathe out, say, thank you, Jesus. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Let us now gently open our eyes and listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Proverbs. As a ring of gold in a swine's snot, so is a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children. Let us now gently close our eyes and reflect on these proverbs. Gently open your eyes. The meaning of this proverb is that a physically beautiful woman who is loose and sensual by displaying her body loses the value of beauty and defiles herself. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. 
this statement is not glorifying being poor it is saying that if the choice is between having a little and god's ways or having a lot and injustice and ungodliness the choice for little is far better good sense makes one slow to anger and it is his glory to overlook an offense being slow to anger reflects the very character of god a god is slow to anger this attitude the good sense of being slow to anger of overlooking offense is completely counter cultural there is gold and a multitude of rubies but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel precious splendor honor value a treasure of course they are valuable because they are rare you can buy gold and rubies anywhere just save up your pennies the lips of knowledge are not easily obtained they cannot be purchased you will never find lips of knowledge at malls do you agree with the wisdom solomon gives us or do you feel it is outdated for modern life let us now gently close our eyes as we ask ourselves what is god telling me personally through this proverbs how do i portray myself am i content with what i have or am i greedy Do I lose my temper quickly or am I slow to anger What jewels do I possess precious stones or lips of knowledge Let us together now say this prayer Dear heavenly father I seek your wisdom let me understand that the heart of wisdom is found when i rest only in you let me draw upon all my experience all knowledge and then cast it all aside looking only for you only for the mercy of your beloved son let me hear your word obey your word in the fear of the lord in my weakness before you only there will i find the wisdom of christ since he is strong where i am weak make me wise o lord by making me simple humble by filling me with mercy like jesus in whom all the wisdom of the universe is found in christ name amen as the hymn is being played let us all together sing along Fear of the Lord is where wisdom starts above all else please guard your heart for out of your heart flow the issues of life it matters 
how you spend your time there is a path that leads to life a narrow way only if you find meditate on god's word in the day in the night you'll know blessings of every kind Like a tree planted by water, shall you be some daughter? You bear fruit in season, you'll prosper. Like a tree planted by water. Spirit is here. Only believe supernatural life is yours every day. Miracles in Jesus' name. Do what is good, do what is right. Flee from evil with all of your might. God. Your ears, guard your eyes. You have the mind of Christ. Like a tree planted by water, shall you be son and daughter? You bear fruit, season your prosper. Let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Children, in India, we showed our appreciation of King Ashoka by choosing his pillar as our national emblem. If we were to pick up King Solomon as our inspiration, what sort of an emblem could we make? For our activity, create an emblem that can remind us of the golden age of the people of Israel under Solomon. Children, in today's class, we learned David chose Solomon as his successor and the United Kingdom of Israel reached the height of its splendor and glory during his reign. God was extremely pleased that Solomon had not asked for personal or material gains. Solomon sought the gift of wisdom to rule his people with justice 
and know the difference between good and evil. He established diplomatic relations with all his neighboring countries and married the daughter of the Pharaoh of Egypt. The Queen of Sheba visited King Solomon and even tested his wisdom and found it was true what she had heard, then departed from Israel after offering expensive gifts. Resentment between the powerful tribes of Israel in the north and south continued to haunt the kingdom, paving the way for a future split. Thank you, children. Enjoy your day. Be safe. Bye.